We are at Mr. Lauren Landau, Landau Performance for strength conditioning for my team at Factory X. Uh, every Tuesday, Thursday, we have strength conditioning. So we're doing a metabolic day today. Time to get after it and see where all these guys are sitting, especially Mr. Anthony Smith. My SPP guys, right, those are my in camp guys. And those guys have fight dates that are coming up pretty quick here. So I need to separate them from the guys who don't have anything coming up necessarily right away so I can build capacity for my GPP guys and then get my guys in SPP prepared for battle. In camp, in camp. Caruso's what? out of camp! <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. What's, what's going on now? You're the only one technically not in the oh, yeah. camp. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Make sure we Your get the time of death for Caruso. <laughs> we need the time of death. Come on, amateur debut on the 15th or something. Yeah? Fuck yeah, you ready? Inside, hell yeah. <gasps> oh, you're gonna have that camera in my face all day long, aren't you? Fuck, no, I hate it. I'm ready, man. We're just, it's the last hard week. And uh, when we taper, man, the work's already done for the most part. We got three or four hard days left to taper on down and get there, man. I'm better than I've ever been, in better shape than I've ever been in. I feel good, man. I feel really good. Second group. Hey, I'm going to have you go right behind Anthony. Eric? Or actually, Eric, yeah. Are we actually going to do some hard shit? Macy. There? We're going to move forward. You guys are going to give me five positional get ups. Get to your back, get to your feet as quick as possible. When you get up, I need a sense of urgency, okay? Hands up, offensive, defensive position. Once you're done with that, so one minute, nope. One minute, <laughs> you want a demo? Um, five reps and then we're coming over to the wall. Nope. Jim, what are you going so slow for already? Face <laughs> himself for altitude. Caruso in it. Face himself for altitude. So Anthony Smith came to Factory X about two years ago, uh, maybe a little over that. And, you know, like I tell any athlete that I talk to that calls me and says, hey, I'm interested in working with you and the team, is I always invite them to come train with us for a week and just get a feel for what what's it like. Because ultimately, it's got to be the right fit. And, you know, it's got to be the right fit for me, it's got to be the right fit for the team, but it's also got to be the right fit for the athlete. So to come in and, and just train for a week and live that life and see, hey, is this really right for me? That's ultimate, ultimately what we did with Anthony, and that was a couple years ago. So, uh, you know, pre his Andrew Sanchez fight is when Anthony and I started training together. Let's go. Thank you, Lionheart. I take responsibility for, for myself and I just never, I don't think I've ever blamed anybody for any of my, of my failures or my losses or, or anything. It's just, even after I fought Vulcan, uh, coming off a win, uh, I'm laying in the cage, I hadn't even gotten up yet. And I remember Mark Montoya came in and he's super pumped and he's excited and Scott Martin's excited and Jim's excited. And uh, I remember looking up at Mark and said, I gotta get better. You know, it, it, it was just some places that I struggled that I wasn't expecting to, you know. It, 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 if I'm like that on a win, I mean, I think you can imagine how I am on a loss. You know, it, it's, it, I'm not the type of guy that runs into adversity and then and looks outward for the reason why. Uh, I'll always look in the mirror first. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Get Macy. She's breathing heavy. <laughs> oh, dang. Oh, dang. Cardio machines are coming, right? <laughs> Oh, man. Shit, shit. Shit, Will. Shit, shit. Yeah, Anthony Smith and I talked about his, where he was sitting in the sense of fighting at 185 pounds or fighting at 205. The first fight I did with him was at 185 pounds, and when I did that weight cut with him, I, it, it's not necessarily the week of the weight cut that's the issue. I mean, that's always tough. It doesn't matter which weight class they're at. But it's the lifestyle and what, how they're feeling for six weeks out, right? And so when I had that opportunity to spend that time with Anthony building up to that fight, 
I noticed, like I noticed with several guys, if you, if you look at several of my guys recently, like James Krause, Zach Cummings, Chris Camozzi, you know, uh, Brian Camozzi, those, kind, those type of guys, those guys have all gone up a weight class. And part of it has been that you're not enjoying life. You know, you have to be able to enjoy practice. You have to, be, you have to enjoy the training and, and the journey and that whole thing because really the fighting is the cherry on top. You know, if we're talking about an ice cream sundae, the training is the ice cream and that's what people enjoy the most. The cherry is, of course, the fight and, and that tastes good and it's great, but the, the whole meat and potatoes of it is the ice cream. So he was not enjoying that process. And, th- and that's a tip off to me as a coach doing this as long as I've done, that there might be a time to look at a change here. And so, you know, I, I suggested that to him after he fought Andrew Sanchez um, and said, listen, I feel like you should be at 205. You do an amazing job there. You're big enough to do it. You're strong enough. You're, you, all, the, all the athlete uh, attributes that you need or have are there. And let's go out there and do that. Well, it took a few it took a few fights to actually convince him to do that. But after we uh, went to the uh, Belém card against Tiago Santos, you know that cut was terrible. And and credit to to Tiago, he beat us. It's not about the cut. I've said that many times before in interviews. But ultimately, that cut was terrible. And, and after that. I looked at Anthony and I said, man, we can't do this anymore. We got to go to 205. And he agreed, talked to his manager, Jim, and, and we decided to go to 205. And now, you know, we're sitting two weeks out from a world title shot against John Jones, one of the greatest mixed martial artists that's ever hit the UFC cage. So we look forward to that opportunity and we're, we're here to shock the world 100%. I don't care what you pick as long as you attack and you hold solid position. Once we're done there, my guys are on this rope. You're going to step over here. We're going to get a tempo. Sand belt punch. We're going to do that for 15 seconds. Okay? If you're on this rope, you're going to come see me to kick. Okay? Go! All on halfway is on that. That's it? That's it? Halfway! things I tell all the young guys you know if, if you're out you know feeling good about yourself because you want a couple fights as a pro and you're chasing girls and, and you're partying and you know you get wrapped up into the, the the lifestyle of this game it's gonna be really hard to be successful for a long time uh, you know which makes this this whole thing with John Jones kind of a weird deal like he's been able to be you know he's he kind of makes me look stupid when I tell guys that you know it, you can't be successful until your all your other stuff is together but he's He's the exception. He's not the rule. You know what I mean? And, and overall, if if your life isn't together and your team's not together and people don't aren't, aren't accountable for their actions, uh, and you can't look in the mirror when when stuff is is going wrong, then you're you're probably not going to be real successful in this sport. Grind don't stop, man. That's what we do. That's what we do. We're almost there. We're almost there. I'll see you soon, Vegas.